Hello and welcome to this another exciting session that we're going to learn Excel in Teacher Joe's classes. Today we are going to learn about computing grades of students in high school using Excel. Uh, we shall also compute their aggregate scores using an if function. So we'll first compute the average marks for each student and then get an aggregate based on the Kenyan grading system. Welcome and let's have fun as we learn. To start with, I have an Excel workbook that is open. And in this workbook, I have random uh, students, students' names, students number one to all the way up to number 20. And I have grouped subjects as they are done in the Kenya National uh, Examinations Council exams for Kenya Secondary Schools. Uh, we have group one, which has compulsory three core subjects, that is mathematics, English, and Kiswahili. And then group two, that has that requires students to sit for the KCSE exam, at least two subjects. But in this case, we have a, a scenario where uh, this class, everybody have selected the, all the science subjects, call them pure sciences. And then in group three, it's required that at least one subject is graded so that uh, at the end of it all, uh, seven subjects are graded uh, in the final uh, result slip. So um, in this class, group three here, we can see that they have done all the subjects in group three. And it's not an offense. In Kenya, you can do a, a maximum of nine subjects, uh, but only seven are graded. So how do you do this? You want to get an average. So we'll get an average of each of these subjects that have been scored, each of them, but we will get the maximum out of this. The highest scored in group three is the one that we shall also use to record. All these numbers are uh, guessed. We have used a random number. Uh, you have seen I've used a random figure, a random, the random function. Uh, if I can show you separately, uh, how that does, how that works. I'll open a new sheet. In Excel, if you want to use the random function, you write is equals to random. If you do random and you open the brackets and close and press enter, it gives you decimal values like that. And then you can copy to, to increase. But if you want a random between, I've used rand between, and I have selected maybe the lowest is 45 marks, the highest is 90 marks, and then I press enter. So the computer now gives me uh, unique, actually numbers between 45 and 90. Uh, so that is what we have done uh, in this worksheet. So all these numbers are random and they don't necessarily demonstrate or uh, indicate a score of a certain institution. Having said that, now we do the first assignment to compute the average. So the average, we have learned it in the previous lesson. You write is equals to average, average, then you open the bracket. Then we select the range. So we select the range like that up to physics, but because in group three, we want to pick the highest score, we'll put a comma and then use a max function. M A X, a max function, we open the bracket and then we tell the computer maximum that is between that range, between H4 uh, to J4, the one that has the dotted, the small, uh, dotted lines around it. Then we close the bracket, uh, it's highlighted in red and the other ones are highlighted in, in, in a blue border. Then you close the bracket again for the average function, then you press enter. So the computer has generated uh, an average, which we can verify. It has done an average between these numbers, and then it has picked one number between these that are the maximums. Uh, we can do that again for purposes of the lesson is equals to average. We open the bracket, then we click and drag across the, the cells. These are continuous, so it is easy. Then you put a comma, then you put max max, then you open the bracket, and then you select this other range, then you close the bracket for that range, and you close the bracket for average, and you press enter. 
So the computer generates the average uh, for each of those and you can click the down, you, you just click the cell that has a formula, take your mouse cursor down to the bottom right. Uh, when the cursor changes shape to a plus sign, click and drag downwards to compute the average for the remaining students. So that is how you, you do it. The computer has automatically selected the highest score in group three subjects and has used it in the average. The next lesson is on aggregate. We want to do an aggregate. I have used, we'll use this scale uh, that is highlighted here. I can put a border around it uh, for purposes of, of, of making it uh, conspicuous. Um, so this is what we shall use. That for any score that is above uh, 81 to 84, then that person's aggregate is an A. Then uh, if it is between 74 to 80, the, the aggregate is A minus, then 67 to 73 is B plus, all the way to uh, an aggregate of E for the score that is uh, between 7 to 10. We don't have that because remember our ram random number we had specified to be between some ranges. So you will tend to see that most of our scales will be around specific numbers, but we can adjust to see the effect. So how do we do this? We use an if function. We call it a nested if function. Follow me closely, watch on the, on the formula bar here so that we can be able to do together. So all formulas and functions, you start them with an equals sign. Then we say if, then we open the bracket. It's a logical test. So if average, which is in cell M4, is greater than or equal to uh, 81. That would take care of all the numbers, all the scores and averages above the, 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 the score of 81, inclusive. Then that becomes an A. Then we put a comma, then we repeat another if, if it's not that, is greater than or equal to 74, then we'll put that to be an A minus. Remember why we are putting the A and the A minuses in quotes is because uh, they are not numbers, they are text. So that's why we have to separate them as that. So if M4 is greater than or equal to, uh, so we have done 74, now we go to 67, then uh, this becomes a B plus. This is one of the most delicate activities that teachers do at the end of the term uh, when they want to produce the merit lists for their students uh, before they, they close school. And if they don't have the computerized system, uh, you can be able to do it on your own. So we continue, that becomes a B. Then if uh, M4 is greater than or equal to, uh, now we are at 53, um, so that becomes uh, a B minus. Then if, again, M4 is greater than or equal to 46, uh, so that is a C plus. Then if it's greater than or equal to uh, 39, that is a C. Then if M4 is greater than or equal to um, 32, then that is uh, a C minus. Sorry. Then if M4 
for is greater than or equal to um, 25, then that is um, that is uh, d plus. Then if sorry 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 I've not finished my formula uh, if uh, m4 is greater than or equal to um, 18 that's a d then if the average is greater than or equal to 11 that's a d minus then you close then you put a comma so case else we don't have to talk to to specify about e because the the the, the, the logical test would filter automatically all the way and then case else we just do an e here and then we close uh, we have to put it in quotations e like that and then we start closing the brackets so you see the the, the computer has put different color codes for each bracket that we opened so we have to open we have to close as many as we opened and when you just close the bracket it shows you it boldens and it tells you how many you have done so I think uh, we have done up to that and then I press enter then it returns a value like that so if we were to test uh, we copy the formula downwards it should be able to give different grades uh, and because I had used a random number system, you'd note that most of them would range between B plus and B minus and B plus and B minus. So what I will do, I will, I will change some figures manually so that we can be able to see the effect. Um, and some of them I put some low numbers like 32 uh, and maybe here. Um, 23, 24, uh, then we see what would be the effect. So that one we have changed. Now it, it shows a C. Let me highlight it in red. And this one we have changed. There is one that we changed. It became an A minus uh, this one. Uh, then we can also change another one to get a, uh, a grade of, we want to confirm that it, an A is possible. So if, for example, we put 12, uh, 12, uh, 14, it's, it's actually supposed to be less than that. So we put 5, 7, 8, 4, 4, 7, uh, 2, so we are removing the randoms. One, one, one. So it detects an E automatically. Uh, so E is done and an A, say for example, this student number five, we put, we put all his scores to be above, above uh, student number five, to be above 84. Then we see whether he will get a straight A. 84, 85. So we are removing the random numbers that we had used initially. Um, to, to test our, our, our sum. So already, even before we continue, because the highest is eta 5 here, it becomes a straight A. So this is a function that we use. And that is the big formula. It looks big, but it has done a logical test across all these values that are listed uh, here. So thank you so much for watching the lesson. 
we shall do another one where we have multiple subject selections. So for example, in group number two, somebody has done two, and in group number three, somebody has done two, and in group number four, somebody has done one. How do you do an analysis of uh, performance in such a situation? Stay tuned, we'll get back to that. Thank you so much for watching.